get into work. You grab a quick breakfast snack from the break room. All of a sudden, you see this on your computer screen. And before you can understand what's happening, your boss walks up to you and says, We have sort of a problem here. Before you start sweating bullets, you remember you have SecureX, which is a zero cost item that's added to Cisco security products. Let's look at SecureX and let's look at a particular feature set in SecureX that will help us out in a situation like this. Most security professionals are familiar with the ribbon that's hosted at the bottom of Cisco security products. And this ribbon, just like a ribbon ties a gift, ties all of the Cisco security products portfolio together in a usable fashion. So the same thing I have in SecureX, I still have that in the multitude of Cisco products such as Umbrella. Same functionality where I can create case books, incidents, and also take actionable action off of devices that are in our portfolio. Now imagine if I had the same functionality, not only on Cisco security products, but other products as well. So other security products have a portal and that portal is browser based. I can use a SecureX ribbon plugin on that particular browser and have the same functionality as I do on SecureX across the Cisco security product suite. I have the functionality to cross launch the Cisco security product suites in addition to doing casebook incidents and orbital search queries. For example, if I go to the Cisco blog website for Log4j, I have the capability to open up the browser plugin, still do the same cross launch, and in addition to look at casebooks, create casebooks, incidents, and examine incidents, in addition to looking at the observables that I can add to a case. In addition to, I can investigate those same observables in Cisco Threat Response, which is a feature of Cisco SecureX. A quick refresher is that Cisco Threat Response matches and maps out the observables that you're researching for the endpoint devices in your environment. What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? What you, what you talking about? <laughs> yes, this gives me the visibility to look at how widespread an infection is in my environment. Because of that, I can take an actionable action on things that are happening in my environment. From an orchestration perspective, deleting, forwarding, quarantining emails, all of this can happen within the feature set of Cisco Threat Response. Damn! Now let's get back to the power of the SecureX browser plugin. So I launched SecureX in the McAfee website. Now I'm using this to scrape the observables in this third party website. And based upon that, I can do a couple of things. I can open up a case and have the same case go from Cisco products to McAfee products, or I can also investigate this into threat response. So let's see what happens. As we look at Cisco Threat Response, we notice that there are no targets in the relationship graph. This means that there are no targets or hosts in our environment that our Cisco infrastructure sees that are housing Log4j vulnerabilities. Although there are no targeted hosts in our environment, I can still take actionable actions against these observables. Now let's look at the Cisco Secure X browser plugin. I go back to this third party website. I want to create a case and incident that will tie in throughout all of my Cisco security products and all products that are well enabled as well. I create a name for the case and now I want to add some notes to the case for future reference. So I go to the third party URL and I copy and paste it into the notes section of the Secure X browser plugin. Next, I create an incident and then match the incident to the case for future reference. So now when I'm threat hunting throughout my environment for Log4j, I have everything organized in a precise manner against all of my platforms. That's all, folks.